here on this promontory of land jutting out into Loch Machneen, we find an assembly of fascinating monuments that may be located on a significant site from pre-Christian Ireland. First, at the edge of the lake, we have the Ballon Stones. The word Ballon is etymologically associated with the word for a bowl. So this is a glacial erratic and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stones. William Wakeman, the antiquarian, writing in 1875, spoke of meeting with a local woman who reported that as a child she was frequently brought to the Ballon Stones by an aged nurse who there performed devotions of some kind. The understanding of these is that people turned them each stone anti-clockwise in the morning if they wish to curse somebody and if the curse was just then it would work out and if the curse was unjust then the person who laid the curse would suffer the consequence of putting a curse. Ideas for alternative community uses made of Ballon stones range from baptismal fonts to the grinding of grains to the crushing of metal ores for smelting. Rainwater that gathered in the hollows was often said in the past to have special healing properties. There has been a tradition of leaving coins in the hollows. Nearby is a holy well associated with St. Bridget. It is called Tubber Bridge. It's mentioned in the writings that there is St. Bridget's well which is underneath some bushes. But I can see the circle of stones around it and the area that I'm walking through now, this must have been where the well is. These are the most interesting to me. These very much must have been the entrance stones. About 100 metres beyond Tubberbridge, we find the Church of the Leinstermen, which is the translation of Kilnalainach or Kalina. The church is speculated to have belonged to a much larger monastic settlement. This church was originally built in the 6th century, but this particular one that we're looking at now is from the 12th century. According to local tradition, the original 6th century church was said to have been built by St. Bridget and St. Lina. I'm looking at the size of some of the stones here and they're fabulous size. Ashlar blocks, pretty well dressed. Even though this church has been ruined for some time, they've obviously been burying people within the church. Now, the level of the church inside is raised quite a bit because of all the burials. The windows of the church are Romanesque in design and indicate a date from the 12th century. You can see on this window here where it's actually been carved to make it nice and round, which is a classic shape for that particular time of uh, church construction. This is a particularly interesting aspect of this church. These two heart-shaped stones, this one and this one here, these are mentioned in writings about this church and the speculation is that these stones are associated with a stone idol that was located in this vicinity. Now what they talk about in the writings is that this whole area was a pagan sanctuary and what they did was they built the original church in the location where the pagan sanctuary was and that these heart-shaped stones were associated with the stone idol that was in this area. Now the stone idol was brought over to Belcu, which is two miles away across the lake. The idea is that the idol was taken from this area in order to save it from destruction by the Christians and that these heart-shaped stones were associated with this idol. The pagan idol associated with this site is called the Krom Kruok. The Krom Kruok stone near Balku is nearly seven foot tall, 
On the front and sides are traces of carving, a girdle, two footless legs, a tassel or a kilt between them. It is said in folklore that the fissure on the west side was caused when St. Patrick threw his staff from Loch Allen to split the idol. It is quite likely that the name Crom Cruach replaced that of a lesser-known local divinity.